welcome to your channeled from spirits pick a card message thank you so much for joining me today if you already know how pick a cards work let me go ahead and tell you which pile is which so you can head to the timestamps. we have pile number one two, three, and four down there on the end. So if you already know how pick a cards work, go ahead and head to the timestamps down below. Now, if you've never been to a pick a card before, allow me to explain this to you a little bit. So what you are going to want to do if you're new here is actually focus on each pile individually or as a collective. Uh, if there was even one in the thumbnail that called out to you a little bit more, the image that you see before the video starts, uh, you can choose based off of that choose off of your own tuition you can look at the timestamps in the description and see if any of the numbers reach out to you some people see their lucky numbers and that's how they know the pile is for them for some people it's a favorite color of the candles or you just intuitively feel pulled towards one now a few things I want to tell you so that you don't have to I guess stipulate your choice, because uh, I get this a lot in the comments, is number one, in order for you to even be here seeing this reading, it means that you are vibrating at a frequency that resonates with this pick a card. So you're never going to choose wrong. Uh, and also, you don't have to choose just one. Some people love to listen to the entire video and choose based off of their own intuition which one was best for them. Some people like to listen to two piles. If two piles are calling out to them, you're never going to choose wrong too much or too little so just let your intuition be your guide and choose from there I also want to say that these messages are timeless it doesn't matter when you listen to them if you're finding it now then it was the perfect time for you to find it because everything is always happening in divine timing now I'm gonna go ahead and be quiet for about 10 seconds or so and allow you to meditate on the cards before we jump into the individual piles We're going to go ahead and jump into the readings. All right, my beautiful pile number ones, welcome in. This is your channeled message from Spirit a pile, if you chose this pile. And uh, the first thing I want to say is that if anything in this reading you want to get for yourself, candles, cards, etc., all of the links are provided down below in the description for you. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. So first and foremost, we do have a black candle here today. And I love, if you're new to my channel, I love to do intention candles with you all. So if you chose the black candle, black candles actually represent, uh, they can represent canceling, they can represent protection. Um, those are like the two main things I would say, at least for me, that really resonates is canceling. Maybe you have recently been hexed or you feel like there's a lot of bad energy around you. You can claim that blessing of protection and canceling out that bad energy. Uh, you can also, if you feel like you just need more protection right now, or maybe you you want to send protection to a loved one, this would be the time to set that intention. So um, you don't have to set any of those intentions. You can set whatever intention you would like to. Those are just some suggestions. Now, what I'm going to do is actually set this candle in the holder for you. I'm going to go ahead and just burn the bottom so that it will actually stick in there a little bit. All right so we can get it to go straight up, you know. And uh, with this, I'm going to let it burn all the way down for you. It won't burn down completely in this reading because there's just not enough time here, but I will let it burn all the way down for you until it goes out on its own. And what that does is the intention that you set will actually go out into the universe and come back to you or go out to the person that you're protecting or whatever the intention is about, it will attract to that. And that is where your intention will go. So. Um, let's go ahead and take a deep breath. Just keep your intention in mind for a moment. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and just light this for you. And then what we're gonna do is keep it up in the corner of our reading so we can still keep an eye on it, kind of see what it's doing because sometimes the flames actually interact with the reading as well. So it's just kind of fun to keep it there and see what happens. But let's go ahead and actually get into your reading. So let's see, what do we got here? We have the Knight of Pentacles, number one. 
We have the Five of Wands. Oh, who y'all fighting? <laughs> we have the King of Wands. Ooh. And the Two of Wands. Wow, this is a lot. Okay. <laughs> Let me go ahead and actually get a little bit more focus on these cards. Okay, so with these four cards, first and foremost, the Knight of Pentacles tells me that you have maybe chosen a new path for yourself recently, and you're actually finding some traction on that. Maybe some manifestations that you have put down are starting to take root and you're starting to see that, but you're actually hitting some roadblocks because with the Five of Pentacles, or excuse me, the Five of Wands, what that tells me is you maybe have had to to, um, maybe you're fighting somebody, somebody's trying to fight you. Maybe this is why you need the protection right now. Um, and the candle totally flickered when I said that, but, uh, maybe you just need a little bit more protection around what you've been doing or creating lately. Um, I'm also seeing there's a little black cat in this card here on this woman's shoulders. So some of you may also have black cats or your spirit guide. One of them is a black cat. So just keep that in mind. Um, Spirit is at least telling me that is true for some of you, but I feel like you've really been doing a good job. You've been taking care of yourself. You've been moving in a way that is in accordance with you, moving in a way that is in high alignment with you. But like I said, there maybe have been some things that have been in your way. And this doesn't necessarily mean it's people. You could be fighting people. You could be fighting a king of wands energy. This is going to be fire signs for sure. So this could be a Sagittarius, a Leo, or an Aries. Maybe you are also the king of wands and you're just fighting yourself a little bit on this process. But I feel like ultimately you're moving from a page of pentacles to a king of wands energy also. So... Um, anytime you go from a, I'm sorry, did I say page of pentacles, knight of pentacles? I don't know why. I'm wondering if some of you are also at the page stage, because if you don't know this about tarot is it does tell a story if you're looking at the chronological order of how the cards go. And so some of you maybe actually are not at this knight stage yet. Some of you are at the page stage <laughs> uh, that comes right before the knight. So some of you may actually be a little bit more innocent and naive and you need to be careful because you could be being taken advantage of by someone as well or a few people. Just be really careful, especially those of you that are dealing in any kind of contract right now. I'm hearing that some of you, it, it's like it almost seems too good to be true. Like it seems like you're about to get everything that you want and just really read the fine print. I'm not saying that that means everything that you're up to right now, that like something horrible is going to happen. No, no, no. Um, obviously you got, you got your little guide there with you. Like you're going to be okay. Your guide's looking out for you. But with this five of wands, I do feel like just be, just be careful, you know, go slow. Don't be, don't supercharge past uh, anything like go over the details. The devil is in the details, so they say. So just really pay attention to the details of what is going on. You know, uh, some of you might even be Virgos, which I'm not worried about y'all Virgos. Y'all will pay attention to the details. But if you need some help with something, looking over something about where you're going, get a Virgo friend in your life, reach out to a Virgo, they will help you. Virgos are all about the fine details. But I'm just seeing that there might be some snags in where you're headed right now. And like I said, this doesn't have to be contracts or a job. This could be literally anything that you're moving into in life right now. For some of you, this could even be a school change I'm hearing, but just look at the details, <laughs> look at the, read the fine print. Uh, but I also see that some of you are going to be leveling up to a King of Wands energy, which is beautiful because the King of Wands is somebody that is a creative visionary. You have so much visionary. You could also be about to link up with somebody that is a creative visionary, but I'm getting the sense more that this is you. Um, this is, this is what you're evolving into. And it's good because being this King of Wands followed up by a Two of Wands, I really get the distinct feeling here that the Two of Wands, sorry, I keep burping. Gosh, when <laughs> when that happens, um, it's just usually that's just like a message also from spirit that like what I'm saying is like a lot of you must be feeling it because I feel like I can't even get my words out fast enough. <laughs> but uh, the King of Wands with a Two of Wands, the Two tells me that like you literally have the world in your hands right now. There are big moves coming to you, big decisions that you're going to have to make that 
they might be a little bit scary. It might be something that you're not 100% used to, but these decisions are going to set you on a new course and they're going to ultimately, you're kind of at like a fork in the road. Like no matter what, you're going to graduate to this King of Wands after this little setback, but you're going to have to make a big decision. And let's see maybe if we can find out what that decision is a little bit more about. Um, we have, sorry, let me get these. My cards got a little mixed up here, but we have breathe. We have round and round. Oh no, I hate that. Um, <laughs> you'll hear me out. Give me a sec. And then we have treasure island. Okay. So some of y'all just don't know when enough is enough. And I'm really getting the sense that some of y'all need to be told this very moment that whoever you're arguing with, it's not worth it. They are never going to see it your way. They are never going to try to understand you, at least not at this point. And you are trying to explain yourself away way too much. That is what that five of wands is about. There's some of y'all are just really trying to make somebody see you as the way that you see you. And you're literally just going around and around and around in circles. And it's not beneficial for you or them. You need to just step back, step back and go go off on your own path. You don't need whatever this person says they're going to give to you, whatever kind of approval. Ooh, I'm hearing the word approval as well. Some of you are waiting for this approval from a spouse or a parent or a family member, or maybe even a friend or a colleague. You're waiting for this level of approval that they are never going to give to you. You need to just kind of sidestep them and do your thing because with round and round and round here, that's you going around in circles with them constantly. And you need to, in order to get off that karmic wheel and step out of the circle, you have to literally step out of it, step out of it, step away from it. Don't engage with the conversation anymore because you're not going to get anywhere. And I'm, Ooh, Ooh, I'm sorry. I know I'm hurting some of y'all with those words. <laughs> I'm feeling that I feel the sting. It stings. Um, but, and I shouldn't say never. I mean, for some of you, it might be never, but they're not going to see you in a certain light until you, you just have to sidestep it and be who you know that you are without that approval. We also have breathe because I think this is going to take a lot of courage and strength for you to do that. Um, it's going to take a lot of courage, a lot of strength and um, look at how beautiful and centered this woman is on this card too. How pretty she's very centered and grounded. And also it's number 29. And what I want you to know about number 29 is when you add two and nine together, you get 11 and 11 is actually the number of mastery. You don't add one and one together. It is a whole and complete number that you don't shrink down in numerology. So 11 is actually the number of mastery. So where you're going, they can't come with you anyways. So just breathe through the process. Remind yourself to breathe during this entire process. Even right now, I think some of you are like holding a breath that you don't even realize that you're holding. Just <sighs> all right. So just breathe a little bit. Ooh, look how crazy this candle's going right now. Um, and then we also have treasure island so treasure island this is a beautiful card this is like wish fulfillment this is all of everything you touch turns to gold you know you're going to find the treasure probably where you least expect it when it comes to this decision with this two of wands especially because we have those together uh with treasure island this card notice how the treasure is on the back of a turtle like when are you ever going to be out at sea and be like oh my god that turtle has a treasure chest on it like you're never going to see that in real life um so it's going to be somewhere unseen, somewhere where you didn't expect it. When you make these decisions about where you're headed, know that your greatness and what you're aspiring after, it's going to come about in a way that you couldn't have foreseen, but it's going to be so worth it for you. So we also have the Aries I Am card. Ooh, I love that. Beautiful energy. Oh my gosh, y'all. Whoever chose pile number one, this is powerful. We also have North Node Life's Purpose. Ooh, I just got chills, y'all. So, oh wow, this is, this is so beautiful. I'm gonna like cry happy tears. <laughs> Ooh, okay. So with Aries I Am, 
you literally are at the stage right now where you are becoming because what we know about the sign of Aries, some of you also might be Aries placements, um, but what we know about Aries is they embody the energy of I am. You know, we have Taurus, which is like I have, Scorpio is I desire. Maybe y'all don't know this, that's why I'm sharing. Um, but Aries is the energy of I am because it's who you are. And I think that's kind of the battle that you're dealing with right now that we've kind of already discovered is it's literally who you are that is being put into question by whoever you're arguing with. And you, all you have to do is continue to be who you are. It's, it sounds easier said than done but that's probably because it is because it takes courage it takes authenticity it takes willpower and strength to go out there and be the man woman or however you choose to identify in the arena but i have to tell you something from my great friend uh brene brown she really teaches about this some of you maybe need to pick up some knowledge on brene brown if you don't know who she is she's fantastic she really teaches this beautiful concept about being the person in the arena and there are people mocking you on the sidelines throwing stuff at you you know maybe um just really trying to antagonize and break you down but you're the person that's out there in the arena fighting for what's right you're the person that's out there doing the damn thing and so of course all these people that aren't out there doing it are gonna have opinions because they think they know better for you but they don't all you have to do is be who you are and the reason i was like "Ooh, happy tears is we have north node life's purpose so your north node if you don't know about the north and south node uh the south node is where you've come from this can be past life this can be things you've picked up early on in this life but the south node is kind of like the karmic past but the north node is everything that you are working to be in this life and the North and South node always oppose each other in astrology. No matter whose chart you're looking at, they always are opposing each other because you're not meant to go running and screaming from your past, from the South node. You're meant to bridge a gap between these two opposite forces. So um, I'm trying to think of like an example I could give you. So I guess let's take Cancer and Capricorn, for example. Maybe some of you are Cancers or Capricorns or have this North and South node. But let's say that you are a Cancer South node with a Capricorn North node. Uh, there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of information I could go into on this. And I'll spare that for right now because I could be here for hours talking about this. But to give you kind of just like a simple, simple watered down version, uh, the South Node in Cancer is all about home, maybe even being a parent, taking care of a family. Um, and that is either maybe where you've come from early in life or where you've been in a past life. And so this life for you would be all about making your own way, paving your own path, maybe even career success, monetary success, social climbing, um, things that don't necessarily involve the family in that way. It's kind of like a mother and like feminine aspect going against the father figure, uh, masculine aspect and bridging the gap between those things because we can do that so um, that's just like a small example but you really want to work towards this north node you're being called now to work towards finding that north node finding the path ahead and something i'm also hearing right now that really needs to be said is that your purpose in life can change you maybe are someone that is in your divine purpose right now and you've been in your divine purpose for years but it's suddenly not making sense anymore and your purpose is shifting and that might be this fork in the road this two of wands that your your purpose doesn't have to be this one thing for your entire life it does change sometimes so you're being called now to link up with what that purpose is and i think a lot of you i'm hearing there's like this major not that I just felt in my gut of like, ooh, but I don't know what my purpose is. And the more that you seek it out, the more and more it will reveal itself to you. And you'll know when it's right. Work on that intuition. Work on honing your own intuition without the opinions of these other people. And you will flourish. You will find that purpose. So the last two cards that I have for you are the blue flame, spontaneous awakening, activation, and integration time. So some of y'all are about to up level like crazy. Uh, the blue flame is actually kind of a, it's a difficult card. I'm not going to lie to you about it. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. 
Um, not Willy Wonka. I don't sugarcoat on this channel. But the blue flame is a very quick awakening uh, in this in this instance. It's it happens very 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 fast, and it can be painful sometimes. Um, even on a cellular level, you might have like random aches and pains in your body at this time while you're being activated, while you are waking up to your true calling right now. So just know that everything in divine timing and don't be scared of this time. Things might be changing really rapidly around you, but know that all you have to do is embody this quality of I am and to breathe and the treasure will be there. So the last card we have is inner earth. You'll survive this new solutions, new beginnings. Oh my gosh. How do these always line up so perfect? I swear to you, I don't plan these. Like I just, I just shuffle the cards and deal them out. Like how does that always happen? Oh, my guides are awesome. But this is basically just a reassurance of kind of what I just said, which is you don't need to worry. You will survive this. Those of you that are going through really hard times right now, you are going to survive this. You are going to come out the other end. The, the inner earth card really symbolizes this promise that solutions are coming, that this new beginning is going to happen so quickly when it finally kicks off, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, how, where, how I was in such a different place and look at where I am now. So I love this for you. This was such a beautiful reading. Please remember that all of these decks are listed down below. If you want to get them for yourself, you can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I'm at Chloe Taylor. I would really appreciate it. And um, don't forget to claim your blessing of protection or whatever intention you set. I am going to continue to burn this down for you. And also lastly, it is never an expectation, but it is always appreciated. If you feel called to do so and you are able, I do have donation links down below for my PayPal, Cash App, and Venmo. Again, it's never an expectation. I don't do this because I expect something from anyone here, but it does help the channel. Literally every single one of these decks was purchased because of your generosity towards the channel. I pour all of it back into the channel so that I can do more for you in higher quality, in better resolution, and I really appreciate all of it. So thank you so much if you feel called to do that. But again, do not worry if not. And uh, I will see you all in a future video. I love you so much. Bye. Hello, my beautiful pile number twos. Well, Welcome in. If you chose pile number two, this is your channeled spirit message. Now, before we get started, I just want to let you know, if you want to get any of the decks that I use today or candles, there will be links down below for everything. So feel free to grab them. I always like to include those for you. And uh, let's go ahead and start a little bit with our candles. So if you chose this pile, you chose the red candle and red candles symbolize romance. <laughs> so some of you may be looking for a partner right now but they also symbolize passion and ambition. Uh, they're big emperor energy as well. So uh, they're big like building empire energy, that kind of thing. And they're also very fast. They correspond to the element of fire. So you could also say that they are very creatively stimulating. And uh, they also correspond to fire signs. So you may also be an Aries, Sagittarius, or a Leo, or you might be trying to attract one. So um, what I ask that you do if you're new to my readings is you choose an intention for this candle. It doesn't have to be any of the ones that I just mentioned. It can be whatever you want. Those are just some suggestions based off of the color choice, but it can be anything that you desire and anything you want to bring into your life. And what I'm going to do is actually light this candle. We're going to stick it to the bottom down here so that it actually stands up straight for us. But I'm going to go ahead and light this for you. And once it burns all the way out, which it will off camera because it takes more than 20 minutes, but once it burns all the way out, your intention is going to go out into the universe and come back to you. So uh, it's like setting that intention and calling upon the universe to receive it. So that is what we're going to do. So go ahead and hold that intention with you for just a moment. Let's take a deep breath together. Right, and I'm gonna just light that for you. 
so that we can get that intention going. So I am going to put this candle up in the corner of our reading so we can actually read the flame periodically as well because the flames actually play a role in the reading sometimes too. Sometimes they will react to certain things. Not always, but sometimes it depends definitely who's trying to come through for the message. But um, that's why I like to leave those there. So claim that blessing, claim that intention and get excited for it. So if you chose this pile, let's go ahead and get into the card reading. So first and foremost, we have the Six of Wands. We also have the Hanged Man. We have the Fool. Oh, okay. This is interesting. And the Ace of Wands. All right. I'm going to be real with y'all. <laughs> um, that's not the entire... There's multiple messages that are coming through. So just... Stick with me for a moment if it doesn't apply right away, because I can already tell you that some of you, this is not, this is not everybody's message that's coming through to me right now. <laughs> some of y'all got played. Uh, some of y'all got played because we have the Ace of Wands. <sighs> that is big dick energy. And I mean it literally. We have the Fool. And especially in this deck, this girl is crying in front of her cell phone. She got played for a fool. We have the Hanged Man, which is like you're being forced to kind of sit back and look at the choices that you've made and kind of assess the situation as a whole. And we also have the Six of Wands in this situation, which is resembling the ego. Y'all have been playing power games or somebody has been playing power games with you. Also, sorry, my cat is in here and just shook her collar really loudly. But some of y'all just got played and you are not feeling good right now. And that is definitely maybe what this is about. There might be some healing that you need to do around a relationship that is ending or that is you're really unsure of. This is so weird to me because I never, it is so rare for romantic relationship readings to come through me. It's just, it's very, very, very rare. I don't do them frequently either, like period. I don't do them very often. Um, it's a really interesting energy, <laughs> but... Ooh, I feel how much your heart hurts, though. And I really hate that. So I'm really sorry that this person has hurt you. You deserve better. Please know that. If you're here, you deserve better than this person. And their choices do not reflect how worthy you are. Ooh, sorry. Their choices do not reflect your worthiness. So please just know that. Know that you are worth so much more than that. And for those of you that it is not about romance for you, some of you have just had either maybe a friendship breakup, maybe a falling out with a family member. You maybe had some kind of big explosion just happen because we have the hanged man here, which is again, you sitting back kind of assessing everything that happened and you're willing to give this another go. You're willing to give this another chance. Uh, this is actually all of you now. You're all willing to kind of give this another go, but please don't take that decision lightly. When we see the hanged man come out, this is like really assess what's going on. Really assess, is this what you think you are worth? Do you feel like you're ever gonna be able to trust this person again, a family member, a friend, etc.? Do you feel like, do you feel like you could continue with a clean slate? Because if that's true, then like go for it. But if not, really sit and take your time with this because this feeling sucks. Now, some of you have also just had a major triumph and it was like sheer dumb luck. Some of you have literally like gone off on a new limb, tried something new and it really paid off for you. And now you're like, holy crap. How can I emulate that again? It, it went so well, like there's no way the universe is gonna gift that to me twice. And you're really like, you're too in your thoughts about this. When in reality, the energy for you to continue to have success is already there. You just need to stop doing this. Stop doing this contemplate thing and just go and do your thing. So this one was a big message for a lot of people. So, ooh, sorry, I'm still feeling kind of emotional from that initial message of like, the pain that somebody has caused y'all. Okay. So, oh my gosh, what did I say about di big dick energy? My good Lord. We have the <laughs> Yang card here. We'll talk about that in a second. We have milk and honey. Oh, milk and honey is nice though. And we have building blocks. Okay. So with Yang energy, this is like the divine masculine energy, which is interesting because I feel like 
that Ace of Wands really talks about that too, this divine masculine energy that's coming through for us right now. But with major yang energy, this could also be about you needing to get in touch with that. Like some of y'all, I'm going to be real, you're too in your feelings about this. And I'm not, I will never, ever, ever, I am highly sensitive and an empath. I will never tell you not to take your feelings seriously. <laughs> like if you didn't come to my channel for feelings, I'm sorry, you're on the wrong channel. I am all about feelings. Uh, literally all of my work is based off of feelings and like Claire audience, what I hear. So... <laughs> Um, I will never tell you not to be in your feelings, but I do feel that some of you are too in your feelings about this. You're letting your emotions kind of overthrow the situation and you're not just out there doing. This is kind of the symbol that says you need to just kind of do something, either cut this person off, walk away, or if this is like a business move and you're thinking about all of this creative stuff right now, um, oh, sorry. I always apologize when I burp, but all that that means is like, there's so many messages coming through at the same time that I literally can't even get the words out fast enough. <laughs> um, but with Yang energy here, it's like, you need to just boss up and do the damn thing. Like, like I said, cut the person off, start the project. For those of you that are doing creative endeavors or starting something new in the business realm, Stop looking at other people and saying that you're going to do this. You're going to do that. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. Like, no, stop looking at what everybody else is doing and actually start doing something about it. You have the fire, the drive and the passion to go after it. So do it. And this also, I feel like this is not about the normal, like self care stuff. This is like, you need to take this big passionate fire energy and channel it into something productive. So those of you that are hurting right now, like channel that emotion into something, make some art, make some music, channel it into doing something good for you. And then we have milk and honey here, which we also have, I believe, is that a five and a one? I'm blind. Hold on. Y'all know I wear glasses. Okay. Yeah, it is a five and a one. So 51 actually comes out to be numerology six and at numerology six, if y'all don't know, numerology six is all about routines. It corresponds to the house of Virgo and it's all about routines for you. So this says start a new routine, start something new. If you start taking action on how you're feeling right now and putting it into something productive, you're going to come to a land of milk and honey and it will be good for you. Something good is going to come out of it because we also have the building blocks card and building blocks literally is exactly what it says. You're going to be coming into this place of, um, starting from a really great foundation, you're going to like build up the foundation and you're, you're making something you're making yourself into the next newest, better version of you. You are creating something from the ground up. You are reestablishing. Some of you are reestablishing your family. Like some of you are actually healing literally. I, yeah, that's what I'm hearing. You're literally healing like trauma lines in your family and you're the person that is rebuilding your ancestry on a better foundation and you're setting the course for what is to come after you. And you're kind of saying like this shit ends with me, if that makes sense. So, ooh, lots of fiery energy here, which I mean, you chose the red candles. So I guess I don't, I, I should have known what I should have known. <laughs> Um, so we also have the void of course moon missing and 52. And we also have the South node life's debts, 42. Interesting. Uh, so some of you, this is karma. This is karma. Uh, what has happened is potentially a karmic tie with someone, you can have karmic ties with family members, with friends, with somebody that you have been entangled with. Um, you can have karmic ties with romantic partners. And there's a lot of different angles to karma. Like I could spend hours sitting here talking to you about karma, but with karmic ties, like I said, some of you, I feel like you're willing to give it another go. 
And with this south node, what you have to know about karmic ties is they are not forever. They are not the people that you are meant to make a life with. They are literally there because both of you agreed to fill out some kind of karma in this life together, break a karmic contract and be done. So I wouldn't actually recommend if it's that, that you give it another go, unless you feel like you're wanting to continue this karmic cycle. It's time to kind of pay off that debt and walk away and build something new. With the void of course moon, I feel like this is you in this situation. You feel like something's missing. Something about this situation just feels off. And 52 is also seven in numerology. It adds up to a seven and sevens are all about contracts, marriage, partnership. Some of you may even actually be married and finding some things out that you're not happy about. So I feel like something really is missing. And this is kind of you saying like, it's, it just doesn't feel right. Something feels off. This isn't, this can't be how life is just supposed to be all the time. This, there has to be better. There has to be more. And so ultimately it's also the void of course moon. I'm also hearing it's, it's that nothing good is going to come out of where you are. Like it is because we already covered that, that something good will come. But if you continue to let this thing overpower you instead of channeling it into something different or better for yourself. Nothing good is going to come from that. Does that make sense? So the next thing we have is the golden children, inner child, tenderness, innocence, and rare gifts. Oh, beautiful. And we also have earth school, life lessons, soul growth, study, and higher learning. So this has been a huge learning experience, number one, with earth school. So um, earth school basically teaches us that earth is meant to be our school. We are meant to come here to learn the lessons that we signed up for previously. And so with life lessons, soul growth, it's like the things that you're learning now, you agreed to learn them and they are here to teach you something. Even if it's something small or big, you're learning something from this experience, even if it can't be seen right now. And the golden children, inner child, tenderness, innocence, rare gifts, you need to let, first of all, some of you just need to heal your inner child. You need to do some inner child work. I would highly recommend doing inner child meditations for this. It's really helped me. Um, I'm not going to sit here and speak too much on that because this is about you right now, not me, but um, I've overcome a lot of childhood trauma doing childhood healing meditations and like inner child meditation. So I highly recommend that if you feel like that is calling to you as I'm talking about it. Um, no, nothing in particular, like you can do stuff just on YouTube. You could search like inner child meditation and try some out. Um, Someday I hope to create my own for you, <laughs> but uh, with tenderness, innocence and rare gifts, it's like some of you right now with this experience are being called to capitalize on your rare gifts. And I shouldn't say capitalize, like build some like a business out of it. For some of you, that might be the truth, but you just need to explore more of your natural gifts. It, it's This experience is kind of calling you back to explore more of yourself and to also ask yourself what you want. I think so many of us actually don't even know what we want from life, so we don't know what to ask for. So don't be afraid to ask for it. Don't be afraid to give yourself tenderness as well and to know that each and every single one of us has rare gifts. Every single one of us has gifts, even if they have yet to be discovered, no matter how old you are. Life does not start or end at 25. It doesn't matter how old you are or how young, how young, how old. You have rare gifts. Everyone does. They just maybe have yet to be explored. So I feel like this reading was very all over the place. There were so many messages for so many different people. So thank you so much for tuning in. Please know that all of these decks are linked down below as well as the candles that I use if you want to get them for yourself. Uh, please don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And lastly, if you feel called to do so, if this resonated with you, obviously it is never, ever, ever expected. But if you feel called to and you are able to, I do have donation links down below for PayPal, Venmo, and cash up. Never an expectation. I don't do this because I expect something in return. I do this because I feel called to do it because I love to do it. And I never expect anything from you, but uh, 
all of the decks that we read with today all came from you. Uh, literally everything that I have received, I've poured back into this channel to make it better, to optimize it. And I hope that this brought new, beautiful information to you. So thank you so much for that, for anybody who has helped recently. I appreciate it. And uh, I hope this message finds you well. Again, that's never expected, just always appreciated. And I love you all so much and I will talk to you again soon. Bye. All right, my beautiful pile number three is welcome in. I feel like those of you that chose pile number three have come from other pick a cards and you're choosing the purple candle again. And if you know what I'm talking about, then you know, and I was correct. But uh, before we get started, I just want to let you know that all the decks that I use and candles that I use, I link down below. So feel free to grab those for yourself if you feel called to do so. And uh, let's go ahead and start with the intention candles. So first and foremost, if you chose this pile, you chose the purple candle and purple candles symbolize royalty. They also symbolize psychic gifts and your connection to your divinity, as well as the crown chakra and the third eye chakra. So uh, also divine feminine, I would say too, and high priestess energy. So um, those might be some things that you want to set an intention around, but you can use this candle for any intention that you would like to. But what I ask is that you focus now and ask yourself what you may want to bring into your life at this time. So just think of something and I'm going to go ahead and actually stick this right into this holder for you. And I'm going to burn it down while I do this reading and then I'll continue to burn it out for you after the reading. And what that's going to do is your intention that you've set is actually going to go out into the universe and come back to you. So um, that's what we're going to be doing. So go ahead and just take a deep breath really quick and focus on your intention. And now I'm going to go ahead and just light this up for you. And that is going to be our intention candle. So I'm going to put this up in the corner of the reading here so we can still see it and keep an eye on the flame to kind of see what's going on. And we're going to go ahead and get into the reading. So, ooh, interesting. So first and foremost, we do have the devil card and we also have the world. Ooh, we have the eight of wands interesting and the six of swords okay so what i'm feeling from this right away is with the devil card this brings in a lot of messages for y'all so some of you Y'all might just be getting freaky with your partner. I'm going to be real with you. <laughs> some of you are just manifesting that. Uh, some of you, however, are also maybe feeling like you're really stuck right now with a lot of addiction. And that's kind of the energy that I'm feeling the strongest right now is you are dealing with something that is addictive. And I'm not going to go into everything that that means. It could be any kind of substance. It doesn't even have to be substance. It can be too much TV, too much eating, too much... Um, there are a myriad of things. Anything that you are doing to excess can become an addiction. And some of you, I feel like, are really struggling to put something behind you. And the good news is, is that with this world card here, especially in this deck in particular, we have this woman that has her back just churned, which says, no more, I'm not doing this anymore, don't want it, don't care. We also have the eight of wands and the six of swords. So I actually really love this for those of you that are struggling and it's for a positive reason. I really love this because you actually do have the strength to turn your back on this thing and to change it. And I feel like I'm hearing specifically for some of you, this is about your body. A lot of you have been trying to make like body changes and this is a positive reinforcement here or a positive note that you have the power to actually change that, to turn your back on what you feel like is keeping you from doing it, even if it's a person or a thing. And um, a lot of you, are, like I said, are also dealing with other forms of addiction, but I heard that one specifically too. And with the 
Six of Swords, we're gonna talk about that first. This to me is about going in a new direction and it's you kind of journeying away from this thing so that you can make better for yourself. And it is gonna be painful. It is something that's not easy. It's a hard decision for you to come to, but when it hits you, it's like, oh, I have to do this for me. I have to know that there's better on the other side of this. I have to do it. And the beautiful thing about this is with the Eight of Wands, that says to me that you're going to have such a huge life without this thing. The second you walk, and this could also, like I said, be a person too, that you just need to kind of turn your back on. And this to me is very indicative that you are going to live a life full of so many more opportunities if you walk away from this. And because the eight of wands is like rapid change, like fast, rapid change, but it is also opportunities just flying open. Uh, for some of you, this also could be codependency I'm hearing. Sorry, I keep getting messages about this card. I'm also hearing for some of you, it's codependency that you need to turn your back on. And that doesn't mean that you have to leave your partner. It just means you need to set up new boundaries and change the dynamic of what has been going on because it's not healthy for you. But when you do that, it's going to be good for you. Good things are going to come in because you've made that decision for yourself. So I love that. Um, and then we also have, let's see, we have, to be fair, we have happy, happy, see what I'm saying? The happy, happy card, are you kidding? And then we also have thinker. Okay, so with, let's kind of scoot these around a little bit. I've, I don't know about y'all, but it drives me nuts when the cards are not center, how I like them to be. Uh, so <clears throat> with, to be fair, this is like, you need to be fair with yourself and others. You know, maybe if this is you with codependency, you need to recognize that the other person may also be struggling with codependency. It needs to kind of be fair that there is a give and a take. And they're also, I'm hearing that a lot of you are not at a point, or maybe you're coming to a point where you need to take more ownership for your situation that you found yourself in. And you need to kind of rebalance the scale and understand that where you, every decision that you've made up to this point in your life, you are where you are because you've put yourself there in one way or another. And you need to kind of rebalance yourself and come back to equilibrium in order to advance on what is to come because we do have happy, happy. So letting this thing go, you are literally going to shine and be radiant from the inside out because we also have a little star. I don't know how well you can see that, but we have a little star being depicted here and we also have a star being depicted up here. So we do kind of have this little, um, oh, there's also a bunch of stars in this card too around her, but with the with this it's like you are literally going to glisten and sparkle like i said i feel like this is a message of when you turn your back on this or make this different or change it or walk away from it or whatever some of you it, you may actually need to walk away from a person but when you walk away from it you're gonna be blessed with a life that is like wilder than your wildest dreams you're gonna unlock this part of your life that you've been searching endlessly for and I feel like the reason maybe you chose this purple candle is because you you need to connect more with your intuition. Not all of you, some of you, maybe you set a different intention, but I think a lot of you are looking for your purpose, your path. Maybe you're trying to connect with your guides and your own psychic gifts. Um, and this is kind of what's holding you back. And I think the reason that food also came through so strongly is that sometimes the, the things that you eat, everything has a vibration. And so like, literally this is science. I'm not just like Josh and yeah, <laughs> but everything has a vibration. You have a vibration. Food has a vibration. And when you put highly processed foods into your body, a lot of times it can lower your vibration and keep you from having your intuition be higher. Like I have noticed personally that when I tend to eat on the like more plant side of things, like when I'm not just eating a bunch of processed crap all the time, I do feel like my intuition is stronger. I do feel more connected to the divine. It's easier for me to do things. So consider that, that nourishing yourself and your body a little bit more also may help with that. And as I was saying, you, you're about to link up 
with a life that is bigger than you could have imagined. But this is the hard choice you have to make before you can move into that. Now with the card thinker, this is like, I feel like some of you, this is literally you right now. I'm just kind of sitting back and being like, what is she talking about? Like, what is it that I'm attached to right now? What is it that I could change? What vice am I, am I attached to? And so I feel like some of you are really kind of deep in thought about this, or you've been racking your brain on where your next move is supposed to be on where you're supposed to be going with life right now. And you feel confused, you feel stuck, you feel chained even by this devil. And you feel, oh man, I hate that this message is coming through right now. I hate it because I, it's, it hits home for me in a lot of ways. I don't hate it, hate it. Okay, let me just tell you what's, what's, what's being given to me right now. I'm trying to cry about it. So, some of you literally tell yourself that you're destined for mediocrity. You tell yourself that you're destined to live in the space that you're in, be with people who do not treat you well, do this job that you hate that is mindless, go to this school around people that you don't like, that it all feels mindless. So many of you just tell yourself, you sell yourself on this idea that maybe it's where you've come from, so it's all you'll ever have or it's all you'll ever know but you are so much bigger than that. The fact that you even vibrate on the frequency to come to this reading because you are matching it in some way speaks volumes about the magic and potential that you have inside you. You are not destined for mediocrity. You are destined for so much more. And the reason that you feel like your purpose or your desires are so much bigger than you is because you are meant to advance past this. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> and I also say that because we have Taurus, I have, and Libra, I balance. So with Taurus, I have, this is why I said your desires might be so big. Taurus is strong desires, right? We Well, technically Scorpio is I desire. Taurus is I actually have it. I don't just desire it, I have it. And... Oh, that's funny. Taurus is 14 and I'm a Taurus and my lucky number is 14. How funny. I've never noticed that. <laughs> um, but Taurus, I have, this means that you will have, like, it's not, you're going to sit and think about it and dream about it and aspire after it and manifest over and over and over and over and never see it happen. It means that you will have it. And with Libra, I balance, this is like, you just need to rebalance your situation, rebalance your life and where it has been and where you've been going. And you'll see those things come in. This could also be a partner as well. A lot of times Libra talks about a partner um, because Libra resembles marriage. Something else I want to talk about with these two cards is that both Taurus and Libra are ruled by the planet Venus. Venus is the planet of so many things but obviously I think most of us think of love when we think of Venus first and this can be self-love love between you and someone else but to me to me love is literally the energy that to me has the highest frequency on the planet and so the fact that you could even be here to hear that like you have the potential within you already to ascend to that level, to carry that love within you, to literally manifest anything that you wish to have in your life. Oh, I love, I, like this reading is so, it is like rattling me in a good way. <laughs> there is so much energy behind this. I don't know which one of y'all called your guide in to give you this, but my goodness. You are meant to have this. You're not destined for mediocrity. You are meant to have the love that you desire. You are meant to have the possessions that you desire. You are meant to have the lakefront property or the beachfront property or the Tesla, whatever it is. You are meant to have those things. Or maybe it's not even that grand for you. Maybe you just want like something simple. Maybe you just want like a two bedroom apartment or condo because you're used to living in like a studio with three other people. And it's just not where you envision yourself to be. And you just want to be in like a two bedroom. So you have a little office for yourself or maybe a child and then a room for you. Maybe your wants are so much smaller, but 
rest assured that no matter what that desire is, you are not destined for mediocrity. You are not destined to not see that be fulfilled for you. We have desire because it is meant to drive us forward. We are given desire so that we can see it be fulfilled. It drives us to have those things be fulfilled for us. So stop telling yourself that you're destined for mediocrity because it's not true. Now, we also have Jump In Andromedan Energy Adventure Say Yes to Change. Ooh, I love that. And we also have All Paths Lead Home, Inner Authority, Intuition, Turn Your Gaze Within. So with these two cards, what I'm hearing right now is that you need to kind of turn inward so that you can change the outward. There's so much inner conflict going on for you that it's why you can't have a, you don't have a crystal clear vision of where you're headed because you haven't sat down and decided. That's all you need to do is make a decision about where you're going. Turn your back on anything that doesn't align with those decisions no matter what it is, no matter who you're going to offend, no matter who, like, obviously don't go out of your way to be malicious and hurt people on purpose. I would never tell you to do that. But a lot of times the decisions that we really want to make, we don't make them because we are so attached to our social identity. We are so attached to what our mothers think of us, our fathers think of us, our landlords think of us, our friends, our coworkers. Instead of actually asking ourselves, what is it that I want without the opinions of everybody else? So you're being asked to jump into that, jump into what you actually desire and walk away from anything that is not in accordance with that. Rebalance yourself for yourself. And with this all paths lead home, this is just a reminder that you're never off path. And I say this a lot, but it needs to be reiterated here that you're never off path. Even when you feel like you have strayed so far from your own inner home, from yourself, from your home, you're never to, you're never off path. Everything is a learning experience bringing you home. And I'm sorry if I made any of y'all cry. I feel like crying right now. <laughs> um, I feel like a lot of this might, this might have hurt some of y'all. In a, in a good way, in a good and bad way, I guess. But whew. please just know that you are loved. Your guides love you so much. They want to assist you on this path. They want to see you have. They want to see you have. They want to see you balanced. They want to see you happy. But there are some decisions that you have to make first. Because it's kind of like that saying, I can lead you to water, but I can't make you drink. You know, so they can lead you so far, but you have to make certain decisions. So, and I the, am not necessarily hearing anything on what those specifics are because there are so many different paths that could be taken. So I feel like this one got super deep, but I love you all so, so much. Please, please, please do not forget to check the links down below. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I'm at Chloe Taylor if you would like to. And if you feel called to, it is never an expectation, but it is always appreciated. I do have links down below to my Cash App, Venmo, and PayPal. I do accept donations. Um, I don't do this because I expect it from you. I don't do this for money. I do it because it's what I feel called to do. I feel that it is my purpose to send these messages out. So uh, I don't do this for that, but some of you that have actually sent donations in literally every deck that we have used today is from you. Like the things that I do get sent, I pour them straight back into this channel so that I can do more for you. So thank you so much to everybody that has done that. I really appreciate it. And I love you all so, so much. Please claim this blessing. Don't be afraid to hone your intuition and or whatever intention you have asked for. And I love you all so, so much. I'm going to continue to burn this out for you. And I will talk to you again soon. Bye. Hello, my beautiful pile number fours. And welcome to your spirit guide channeled message. If you chose pile number four, this is the pile for you. So the first thing I want to say is if you want any of the decks or candles that I showed today, they are all linked down below for you. So please do check that out. And uh, if you chose this pile, you chose the red candle. And red candles symbolize the element of fire. They symbolize the zodiac sign. Aries, 
Leo and Sagittarius. They also symbolize romance, passion, creativity, drive. Uh, so you may want to set an intention around those things, but you can set any intention that you would like today with this candle. And what I ask now is that you think of something that you want to bring into your universe, into your world at this time, uh, something that you would like to ask for or that you just want to, to bring in to you and focus on that intention for a moment. I'm going to go ahead and get the candle ready for us. I'm just going to burn the bottom a little bit just so she'll stand up straight for us. And then let's go ahead and just focus on that intention. Let's take a deep breath together real quick. Really feel into that intention. Now, what I'm going to do is actually light this for you. And as this burns down this intention, it's going to send your intention out into the universe and bring that blessing to you. So that is what we're doing. And I'm going to let this burn down for as much of the reading as I can. And then I will continue to let it burn down off camera as well for you because uh, I don't put them out. I actually let them burn all the way down for you so that that intention will reach you. Look how big the flame is. This flame got big really fast. Um, I'm gonna do a video in the future on candle flames and how to read them. But usually when the flame is really big, like that's big energy, big creative passion, big passion energy, we love it. Uh, usually also means that your intention is going to get here pretty quickly and it might be more than you anticipated. So uh, let's go ahead and get into the card reading though. So first and foremost, we have the seven of wands for you. We also have the six of cups. We have the knight of wands. Ooh -hoo. And we also have the seven of cups. Okay, so a couple of sevens here. Some of y'all, your lucky number might be seven. Um, a couple of sevens here. So the seven of wands to me, actually, no, let's, let's start with that knight of wands. <laughs> so the knight of wands, this usually is someone that is going towards their passion. Sometimes this can also be somebody that we've manifested into our life, a partner, a lover, if you will. Um, but with a knight of wands, usually this is somebody who kind of like Aries isn't really going to take no for an answer. <laughs> it's just going to like go after their passions, go after their endeavors, go after what they feel called to do without letting anyone or anything get in their way. And I feel like you're kind of maybe being called to do that now because we do have the seven of wands, which... The seven of wands to me, it, it kind of, it, it's like you are kind of having to go to bat for yourself. Like you need to just kind of put aside, like you're a lion, you're not going to lose sleep over the opinions of sheep. And even though you maybe feel like you've just been battling after battle, after battle, after battle, like you have a good head on your shoulders and you're going to do what you need to do to keep yourself going strong and keep yourself going forward. So there may be some people that are coming to challenge you on some things, but know that you kind of got this in the bag. You don't really need to, you don't need to worry about it. You've got it. You've got a good head on your shoulders. You've got good feet on the ground and you'll be able to handle whatever curveball comes your way. Now, with the six of cups, the seven of cups and the six of cups. So actually let's talk about that seven of cups first. The seven of cups to me says that you have a myriad of, of paths in front of you right now, because if you actually look at these cups, I don't know how well you can see them, but if you actually look at these cups here, each one is filled with something different. Uh, they all look different too, but this one has roses. Like, let me see if I can actually look at this a little bit closer. Yeah. They all actually have plants in them in this deck, but um, the idea is, is that some of those pathways are going to lead to treasures, to riches, to good things, and some of them might lead to snakes and things that you don't really want. So you need to be really picky about your choices right now. Don't let anybody rush you, but also don't go so fast that you're not weighing out the path in front of you because you don't want to make a wrong turn. Like you do have a good head on your shoulders, but you might be going a little bit too fast right now. And maybe just like, I'm not saying dim out your passion and don't go after it. I'm just saying maybe think things over a couple times before heading in a direction. And then with our six of cups here, I feel like the six of cups is 
it is like I mean, it 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 often depicts the past, and that's really what I'm hearing is like some of you I feel like are also a little bit scared to make any moves because either the past is calling and challenging you or you are afraid of the past repeating itself. Like you have kind of already done something significant and you want to go in a new direction, but you're so terrified that this past is going to repeat itself that you don't even want to move in a new direction. And the opportunities are there though. Any outcome that you really desire, the, the possibility is there for you. So you don't really have anything to be afraid of, I guess, is what I'm saying. And then this also could be just about you connecting with people from your past right now that could be beneficial for you. Uh, because a lot of times the Six of Cups can talk about like a relationship with a parent or a childhood friend. There might be somebody that's trying to connect with you from the past right now that is either going to help or hinder you. It just kind of depends on the person and the situation, I suppose. For some of you, I feel like this might be somebody that's going to hinder your progress and maybe is challenging you. For some of you, I feel like this might be a good thing and actually lead you to something even better than where you are. So I guess I would say just use, really, really, really rely on your guides, on your intuition to kind of help you make moves forward and don't move so fast that you don't think things through because I do feel like for some of you I'm hearing both which is unfortunate I hate it when I can't be more specific but there are so many of you that chose this pile that it's both for some of you this is a good thing and for some of you it's not so let's see if we can get a little more intel on this so we do have chaos and conflict so that makes sense to me because we do have that seven of wands we have an unfinished symphony interesting some of you have some unfinished business with the past and we also have flexible okay so with these cards the chaos and conflict i'm not surprised that we see that at all because we did get the seven of wands as well which to me can be chaos and conflict with others so the best thing to know is that even right now if it feels like there's a lot of chaos going on around you that you're gonna find your way through it it's going to be okay. It's coming up for a reason. It's coming up because there is an unfinished symphony with you. There is something in your life and it might not mean that there is literal unfinished business. Like you literally have to complete something specific. It, for some of you, there's just a lesson in your life that is repeating because you are meant to learn something from this that you have yet to learn. So for some of you, this unfinished symphony you literally just need to learn something because we do have the unfinished symphony is 10. And what we know about 10, in my opinion, there are a lot of opinions on this, but in my opinion, 10 is the ending and the beginning because in tarot, 10s are the completion. They are the completion, but in numerology, 10 reduces down to one, which is the beginning. So to me, it is endings and beginnings. And I feel like because of this right now, this conflict, this tension that just seems to keep cycling up for you or cropping up for you. And it, like, again, it might be different people in different situations, but it's like a similar theme keeps coming up. It's there for a reason. The theme keeps coming up because there's something to be challenged or healed or changed or processed. And you have to rewrite not rewrite, excuse me. You have to write the rest of that symphony. You have to finish it so you can move on to the next song. Does that make sense? So we also have a flexible, which says remain flexible right now. Don't be so stuck and set in your ways. Even when you have people challenging you, the past calling, um, different opportunities that you can go down different paths, be flexible because I do feel like anything you try to plan right now, a, a wrench is going to get thrown right in the middle of that. I'm literally seeing it like a wrench just like soaring through the air and going right in the middle of your plans. So be flexible with whatever is coming up for you right now. We also have 19, which again uh, goes up to a 10, nine and one or 10, and then 10 reduces to one. So that's another ending and beginning. Oh, we also have a master number here. 33 is actually a master number. You don't reduce that. So you're being made stronger from this situation as well. Um, what you're going through now, you're being made stronger because of this. You're leveling up. This is a leveling up in some way. Uh, for a lot of you, I'm hearing that this could be 
you're leveling up into adulthood. <laughs> For some of you, you might be a little bit younger and you are leveling up into more of your adult self. Um, now we also have Pisces, I believe. And we also have Venus love. So this is really interesting to me because I feel like what spirit is saying right now, what I'm hearing is you need to believe in a favorable outcome for yourself. This is probably the biggest thing that's holding you back is you have written this narrative in your head that says you're never going to succeed in the direction you're going because you've never succeeded before. And you need to rewrite that narrative, whether it is actually on paper and scripting it, reprogramming your subconscious with affirmations, like they're reprogramming your subconscious is a real thing. If y'all don't know about this, your subconscious controls some ridiculous amount of your brain. Like we only use like a fraction of our brain in our conscious mind. Your subconscious is a storer or a storage place for all of like the dumping ground of your brain. And so this narrative might even be playing in your subconscious and the way to change that, to reprogram the, oh, sorry, I just punched you with the microphone a little bit. I'm so sorry. Um, your programming in the subconscious, you need to believe in a different outcome. So that I feel like is really where you're being told to change it. That's what I'm hearing is that some of you just need to listen to like affirmation tracks or actually write out like re-script where you're trying to go and like rewrite the things that are not true so like let me just give you an example i suppose um let's say that you feel like you are never going to get this specific job because you've gone out for it multiple times and they've always chosen someone else. So you have this belief that you're never going to be chosen for this position. So instead you would write out, I'm never going to be chosen for this position. You would cross it out and write, um, there is no one better for this position than me, or I'm so grateful I have this position in blah, 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 like whatever it is. So you will rewrite that statement and keep reminding your subconscious of it. I've actually done this in my life with money. I have a huge past of like literally getting my electricity shut off, literally never paying my bills, running away from mistakes that I've made in my past. And when I started to actually reprogram my subconscious around money and limiting beliefs around abundance, it changed my entire life. So just take my word on that. It does work. It has changed my life literally from like living in poverty without electricity, with like so many of my basic human needs not being met to completely turning it around. So just just know that it does work. You can take my testimony for it. So the other thing I want to talk about is this Venus card. And uh, some of you that chose this pile, you might want to also listen to pile number three, because pile number three had Taurus and Libra in it, which are both represented by Venus. So uh, I feel like these two piles might be a little bit linked for some of you. But with Venus love, this to me says you need to give more love either coming to a place where people that are challenging you recognize that these people have their own belief in their own reality of where they've come from based off of the experiences they've had and how they are directing or projecting or whatever it is that they're doing. It has so much more to do with them than it ever will have to do with you. And so I really do feel like you're being asked maybe to give more love to yourself to set boundaries or give more love to the other person. I feel like that one can be a lot harder for some of us to do, but give more love to the other person or other people and recognize that we are all, when we are acting from a wounded childlike state, which many of us do, um, if we haven't gone through and done that intentional healing work, people will literally walk around as wounded children wounding the world. So recognize that it doesn't really have anything to do with you and just give the situation love, give yourself love, give yourself grace and exert boundaries where you need to though. Don't let people walk all over you. So we also have karmic relationships. Oh man. Uh, Orion energy, polarity, soul growth, and conflict. There is a lot of conflict in this reading, which is interesting because 
I feel anger, but it's more from the gut. Like, I don't know if most of y'all are feeling angry in your gut. Usually anger for me, when I read for people, it comes up in the throat. Like you're not speaking your truth, but I feel like for a lot of you, because it's coming from the gut, it's like you feel like your personal power has been cut down by some people and you need to take that back and not let people drain you of your energy like that. Um, it's really interesting. I don't know that I've ever felt anger like that, <laughs> at least not during a reading before. That's So if y'all are feeling angry in your gut, work on your solar plexus and maybe even your sacral chakras as well. But with this polarity, something that I'm hearing is that polarity, the reason that we have it is to show us what we do not want. It doesn't mean that you're off path or you're doing something wrong. It's just to show you more of what you do not want so you can recognize what more you do want, if that makes sense. It helps you kind of hone down what you do actually want. And this is here for your growth. What is happening now? It is all for your betterment. It is all for your soul growth. And we also have star ancestors, hidden secrets, lost wisdoms, look a little deeper. So I feel like for some of y'all, when I said, give the other person love, that anger came out that was like, I'm not giving this person love. Screw that. You're being asked to look a little bit deeper on the situation. Obviously, always protect yourself. Always do what you need to do for you first. But some of y'all do need to look a little bit deeper to allow the healing to take place. Look a little bit deeper into the situation. There's more to what meets the eye. Even if somebody is like screaming in your face, there is more that meets the eye to that situation. The question to ask is, wow, I wonder what made this person feel like they need to act this way. I wonder what they feel like it benefits them to act this way. Or I wonder who they learned that from. Or because we are not ever born into this world like that. We're made to be people like that. So look a little bit deeper on the situation at hand. I feel like some of y'all are real angry and you just want to prosper and go forward on your own path and not really deal with any of these shenanigans. But... I feel like there's more to meet the eye and there's honestly a really big learning lesson in this for you. So I love y'all so, so much. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please do not forget to check out the links down below. If you like any of the decks or candles, anything like that, follow me over on Instagram and Twitter. I'm at Chloe Taylor. And uh, if you should feel called to do so, it is never expected, but always appreciated. If this reading resonated with you, I do have links down below for my PayPal, Venmo and Cash App if you want to donate. I don't do this because I expect donations. Uh, I don't do this because I ever expect money. In fact, I do this because I feel like it is my soul calling and my purpose to put these out there for you. But if you feel called to help, I always appreciate it. All of these four decks that we used in this reading today were because of you and your generosity. Uh, we were actually able to purchase new decks for the channel. So I pour all of it back into the channel so that I can actually upgrade things for you. So thank you so much for those of you that have helped. I appreciate it. But once again, if you don't have it or you don't feel like it or you don't want to, no worries. There's literally zero expectation. So thank you. Thank you so very much. And I will talk to you all again soon. Have a lovely day. Bye.